We are live. So, welcome to the Suicide Squad review and thoughts. And yes, just to clarify, this is the 2021 movie, not the 2016 movie. They didn't make it super easy because the only difference in the title is either there is a the or there is no the. I realize this video is long. If you're only interested in the review, that part of the video is not the whole length of the video. To see its length, check the time codes in the description box. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I'm currently dealing with some back pain, but I still have a lot to say about the movies that I watch, so I'm going to speak faster until my back feels better. I start this video with a review with zero spoilers. Certainly, if I spoil anything, I will warn before I do so and hold up an index finger on until I'm done with the spoiler, so you can mute and skip ahead and see me lower my index finger. And it, I, I will not be warning before spoiling earlier entries in the franchise, but as soon as I end the review itself and go into the thoughts sections, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers for this movie, including discussing the ending. I will no longer be warning before I do so. I've gotten some feedback that the volume is too low on my videos, so I've tried moving the camera closer. When I tested it, it had increased volume compared to the way I used to have the camera, so I hope this helps. Now, I have not yet watched the Snyder Cut of Justice League. I, I figured that this movie, The Suicide Squad 2021, would be one of the, sadly, still few good team-up movies in the DCU. Batman v Superman is bad, Suicide Squad is bad, Whedon's Justice League is bad, Birds of Prey is amazing, but yeah, this one is incredible. Maybe they just, maybe they should just start rebooting these, but put the word THE at the start of the titles. THE Man of Steel, THE Batman versus THE, yeah. Content warning and or trigger warning, I am going to be discussing the potentially triggering content of this movie, including torture, kidnapping, gaslighting, mental illness. Uh, depression. And yeah. So, yeah, this... The movie is rated R, and so is this video. And according to a behind the scenes that I found on YouTube, the studio wanted a PG-13, but Gunn managed to convince them to go for an R rating. I'm really glad. It, this is the first R-rated James Gunn movie that I watch. I hope he gets to make more like this. This really is, it's one of his best by far. And he really, he knows how to use an R. It, it's not just, like, you know, some, some people, if you give them an R, they'll just, you know, the movie will have a lot of swearing and a lot of gratuitous violence. But it won't really hit, I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad. I think the, the South Park movie does a great job at really using an insane amount of swears really well. But here, like, the, the... R-rated stuff is creative and memorable. It's not just the the same thing over and over. I it's it's been a really long time since I last watched a movie where I felt where I did not know what was going to happen next, where I felt like basically anything could happen. That's very true of this movie and yeah, it's it's incredible. This video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out, so feel free to watch something visual such as clips from the movie, in another tab, I won't mind. Now, anything negative against saying this video is not out of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. And it's not that I'm upset at how it compares to what it's adapting or to earlier movies in the DCEU. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I say in this are fair criticisms based on budget when it came out what it was trying to achieve, etc. Now, let's see. I, I, if if you're coming into this movie and you haven't watched the DCEU leading up to it, 
I would say I don't like telling people to go watch the 2016 Suicide Squad movie, but if you're going to watch this one, and I think you should, there is definitely some, it, it lays some foundations for stuff that's followed up on in this. You don't need to have watched Birds of Prey, but I don't know why you wouldn't watch Birds of Prey. I've, I've watched it three times by now. I love it more with each viewing, and I it was it was extremely high up right from the first view. It's it's an amazing movie. Anyway, technically you don't absolutely have to have watched it, but it definitely does. It helps a lot to to. There's some there's some context there. Yeah. So that brings us to, right, since we're still dealing with Corona, I want to say during this video, it is possible that I will touch my face. I want to assure you, I washed my hands since the last time I was outside, and I will wash my hands again before going out. Now, yeah, so this is the first time I've watched this movie, and I basically, as soon as I got back from the movie theater, I hit record. Now, let's see, the, right, uh, some more behind the scenes, Gunn said he, this, of all of his films, this is the one he's the most proud of, and that makes a lot of sense, and he really appreciated how much freedom he was given, and, let's see, the, yeah, the movie has a heart, but it is not as sentimental as the Guardians films, he says. And he also said he made it for IMAX. Yeah, I'm, watching this in IMAX must be amazing. I could 100% imagine that. Now, plot. The Suicide Squad are sent to Corto Maltese, a South American nation on a secret mission. They are to erase everything left over from Project Starfish. And the three taglines are, they're dying to save the world, don't get too attached, and boom. So this is an action adventure comedy sci-fi and the action is fun and exciting, the comedy is hilarious, the sci-fi does stimulate your brain. I would say it's more <sighs> hmm. See, I is it is it soft sci-fi or hard sci-fi? I guess probably soft. It's it's not as yeah, yeah. Ultimately, the yeah. Now let's see. I I don't think I've written it anywhere, so I want to say before I forget. This does an incredible job at setup and payoff. Now, I can't really give any examples without spoiling anything, but just. Nothing in this movie came out of the blue. Everything had some setup before the, yeah. Now, let's see. So, so, yeah. Going over the DCU, Man of Steel is, is fine. I It's probably around a, a 6 out of 10. My issues with it are summed up very nicely by folding ideas. Batman v Superman is a mess for many reasons, explained well by Folding Ideas and Renegade Cut. 3 out of 10. The original Suicide Squad can be entertaining, but is a complete mess due to the editing. Also explained well by Folding Ideas and Renegade Cut. And now that he's done a video on it, I can add to the list that Cosmonaut and Variety Hour does a great job as well. 5 out of 10. The first Wonder Woman solo movie is excellent. 8 out of 10. The original Justice League is bad. 6 out of 10. Once again, haven't watched the Snyder Cut yet. Now we're back to the excellent ones. Aquaman, Shazam, and Birds of Prey. All of them are 8 out of 10. Honestly, if... Yeah, to, to be perfectly honest, if, if you tell me I have to choose one DCU continuity movie, note that I said continuity, so Joker is out, or it would be number one, but if I have to choose one DCU continuity movie to say that it's the very best of them, it's Birds of Prey. And, it, and I haven't watched Wonder Woman 1984 yet either. 
I think the DCU, as at its best, when a director with a compelling vision is at the helm, especially when they're allowed an R rating and a lot of creative freedom, by far some of the best are Birds of Prey and Joker. And yeah, I I figured that this would be another, since once again, R rating, a director with a vision, a lot of creative freedom, apparently pretty much total complete for total creative freedom. I, I, I'm pretty sure I heard Gunn say so. And and yeah, like let's see, is this? I think this might. Is this maybe tied with Birds of Prey? I, th I th in some ways Birds of Prey is better, but yeah, I, th I think right now I'd I'd say this and Birds of Prey are are basically tied for the best. Yeah, I I know I realize I. I don't know why I didn't just go into the the whether this where this one is on the on the ranking before I start talking about Birds of Prey. Whatever, I'm going with it. Now, James Gunn is having the time of his life directing this movie. Like this is, yeah. Now, I watched, you know, I watch pretty much every single comic book adaptation that goes to theaters. This was one of the ones I was really excited about. You know, some of them, it's like, ah, oh, okay. I mean, I made this decision, I want to stick with it, but this one I was really, really hyped about. So, the, yeah. This was written by James Gunn at his James Gunniest. And let's see. Yeah, so the other movies that I've seen that he's written are Guardians of the Galaxy one, Volume 1 and 2, Dawn of the Dead, 13 Ghosts. Let's see. And he really does an incredible job here. Like, he managed to find. It's. It, if I hadn't just watched the movie, if someone tried to, or, yeah, let's say I hadn't watched any James Gunn movie, and you told me he put Polka Dot Man, King Shark, and Harley Quinn in the same movie, and the movie really has a heart, and, like, there's, there's tragic characters in it, and it's like, I wouldn't believe you. There's no, it's absurd that he makes it work. and. Apparently, some people didn't think that it quite worked, but, you know, the vast majority of the Rotten, you know, Rotten Tomatoes critics, and, and also, also the majority of the Metacritic critics, yeah, it's, it's wild that it actually works. The movie handles plot twists really well. There are not too many. They are great. There aren't too few. They're not too easy to figure out. I mean, I will say this is one of those, like, movie trailers today. They just give away way too much. But even if you've watched every... I, I, I think I've watched every trailer and every TV spot. I didn't watch any clips. There was still a lot that wasn't spoiled. Like, even if you think you've... Seen, no, no, no. There's stuff you haven't seen. Trust me. The direction is quite focused, and yeah, again, James Gunn. And the only other movies I've seen that he's directed are the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I've heard that Super and Slither are, are great, but, you know, I, I, I'd like to watch them. I'm not avoiding them. If I find them on sale on DVD, I'll probably get them. But yeah, I, you know, I, I, I like to say about the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Once again, I love the entire MCU. The I, I don't make any excuses for Iron Man two, but I love all them. What can I say? I love it. I love all the movies. I love all the shows, the the uh, Disney Plus shows. I have not watched the. Net Netflix shows and or the. ABC shows. I, I, 
you know, I might get to the, the ones that are on Disney Plus. I might get to. I don't have Netflix. Not intending to get it anytime soon. You know, if if something pops up on there that is in continuity with the MCU, okay, I'll have to seriously consider it. That's that's why I got Disney Plus. But anyway. So I love all of them. So, you know, but of of the MCU movies, but the the thing that I I like to say about the the Guardians movies is they are the most emotionally resonant of the MCU movies. There there might be you know one or two up there that are not Guardians, but the yeah, like the the in in both of them. You know, there was a while where I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's especially on the second one. But then I rewatched the first one. It's like, wow, there really is a lot of good stuff here. You know, I, I had, I, th I think the first time I didn't realize it as much because I was, you know, I was picking up all, all the, the jokes and I thought the action was really cool. But then when I went back and, and rewatched, I realized there's a, yeah, anyway, the most emotionally resonant, the most, the, the ones with the highest emotional intelligence. And he brought that here. This isn't quite like the Guardians movies. In in some ways better, in some ways worse. It definitely is like I think if it was closer, if it was much more like the, the Guardians movies really have a, a heart and and are very you know, they, they want to explore trauma and such. And this one does explore trauma. But this one doesn't have quite as much of a heart. And it just wouldn't make sense if it did. Because this is the Suicide Squad. You know, these are bad guys where, you know, at the end of the day, the, the Guardians, they're, they're more, they're... They're not necessarily... They, they didn't start out as heroes. But they were closer to anti-heroes than, than outright villains, just completely. But yeah. Let's see. But yeah, you can really tell that, you know, this was something that James Gunn was passionate about. This wasn't like, um, you know, a fire from Marvel. I don't know, I'll I'll take anything. No, he he wanted to do this. This was something he was passionate about, clearly. Now the th this has a really strong opening. The it it does a really good job very quickly getting you into the the core concept without like it, it yeah with without spending forever on which was one of the problems with the first you know this one gets them on the mission just incredibly quickly where the first one like. Yeah, I already mentioned I'm spoiling the DCU up to this point. In the first one, the movie's half over by the time the mission starts, which is just ridiculous. This one, it's it's much more, much larger chunk of the movie that is that makes up the mission. And yeah, the the opening does a good job of establishing the characters that were that it's important we really understand and get behind and the the what's the word it's, uh, yeah the the concept and the and the plot the ending is excellent i'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending but it it doesn't there's there's no deus ex machina there's no convenient writing it it's does it resolve everything? Um, almost certainly, and you, yeah, we understand why the ending happens the way it does. Why it couldn't have happened sooner. And there is, you know, there is a post-credit scene, so. You know, stay through the end credits. 
the movie never loses your interest. I wouldn't say that there's really any parts of it that are less interesting. It's it's never, never boring, not for a single second. I, I legitimately never knew exactly what was going to happen next. Now, I've read a bunch of the new 52 Suicide Squad stories, basically any and all that I could get my hands on, which was a lot of them. And, you know, even from when I just watched the trailers for this one, you know, I could tell this is a movie that understands those comics where the first, you know, the 2016 movie was too afraid of having color. It was really eager to make every character a street criminal. Didn't seem to really trust that the movie could survive all the squad members being irredeemable villains where, like, I'm not going to say who, but some of the squad members in this are despicable. And some of them are basically like, you know, they're, they're, they, they did something wrong, but they're not a monster. You know, they have a heart and, and it makes that work. Now, let's see. And yeah, in in some ways, it's a very accurate adaptation. Like there's 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 stuff in this movie that feels like it could have been taken directly from. I don't think they directly adapt one specific story. I think they, they took some elements from different stories. Now, the movie does a really great job with the superpowers. Like, I th some of it is different from the source material, but the, the powers are used well. They're used a lot. It's easy to follow. That's, you know, that's something that... But by now, it, it, you know, filmmakers have gotten pretty good at it, but there was a while where, like, the the use of powers, it could some sometimes, you know, yeah, so, sometimes it, the movie didn't do a good job of clearly communicating who is using what power, why, and why is it working, and, and stuff like that. Now... That brings us to the characters. There are some of the characters that you you feel a tremendous amount of empathy for. There are some that you feel a deep, searing hatred for. There's some really memorable characters, some really charismatic characters. Now, a few of the characters in this are CG, and they're voiced by regular actors, not voice actors. I do prefer when voice work goes to voice actors, many of whom work for a really long time, have to work, have to take any work they can get, rather than big Hollywood names who can pick and choose. With that out of the way, I do think this movie is well cast. I think they made some really smart choices in who plays what. So, Margot Robbie once again plays Dr. Harleen Quinzel, or Harley Quinn, and it really... Let's see. Yeah, so according to Wikipedia, Robbie said the film would show a new side of the character compared to her previous DC Extended Universe DCU appearances due to her being in a new place and surrounded by new characters. And yeah, I it was it was I th I thought they did a, a incredible job of the let's see. The, the, ah, what's the word? Yeah, one critic points out that, you know, James Gunn gives Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn some of her best action and dialogue thus far. 100%. Like, she... If you're really passionate about Harley Quinn, she has some incredible stuff in this movie. You know, she was she was the character I was most excited to see more of. And just it's it's unreal. Like 
the the utter garbage fire that the 2016 movie was, you know, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn really did manage to, like, stand out as something incredible in there. And then Birds of Prey did a great job of, of taking it in a different direction. And then this, like, it's it's wild. I, I apparently, like, there's a behind-the-scenes thing where she said that she need, she's going to take a break from playing Harley Quinn because she's exhausting to play. I don't blame you. That's 100%. 100%. She, she must be exhausting. I do hope that she eventually comes back, but I could 100% understand taking a break. And, yeah, it, it's really... But the, the... Let's see. Yeah, so the... Yeah, this, this movie does explain why... Harley is now in prison since, you know, Birds of Prey, last time we saw, she wasn't. And, and right, in, in Birds of Prey, Margot Robbie made sure that we never forget that Harley Quinn is a bad person. And, I mean, this movie... Um, hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, there's still, yeah. And Idris Elba as Robert Dubois slash Bloodshot. And basically the, yeah, James Gunn has said that Bloodsport is an unsentimental portrayal of a 1960s action hero like Steve McQueen without the moral repercussions of those characters. And, yeah, originally Idris Elba was supposed to play Deadshot, and then they changed it to Bloodsport. I'm really glad. they There's some really interesting stuff here that they can do with Bloodsport that they could not do with Deadshot, and... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go into, you know, just briefly, so, spoiler, not, not a huge spoiler, but in this movie, the relationship between Bloodsport and his daughter is different from the one that Deadshot has with his daughter, and if they, if Idris Elba had just been playing Deadshot, they would either have to just go with the relationship they had in the first, or they would really screw with it, and yeah, I'm glad they didn't. No more spoilers for the time being. But, you know, speaking of Deadshot in, in the first movie, you know, lucky guy, he found an excuse to wear a monocle. John Cena as Christopher Smith slash Peacemaker there's this great kind of rivalry between him and Bloodsport, and basically, like, we, you know, we meet Bloodsport very, very early in the film, and then Amanda Waller says that she's handpicked the team that he's going to lead. Everyone on the team can do something that no one else can. And when she introduces Peacemaker, you know, basically, like, you know, Bloodsport says, you just, you just, you just said that everyone on the team is completely unique and, but what he can do is what I can do. And for the, yeah, for, for, for a lot of the screen time that they share, the two of them are kind of trying to prove that the other one, you know, that they're better than the other one. And... It's it's a lot of fun and just John Cena does an incredible job. This is the first 
thing that I see him in, and I've heard that in some of the other stuff he's he's terrible. But the the yeah, it's it's I I didn't expect to care as much about him as I did. Now, apparently, originally, Dave Bautista was supposed to play Peacemaker, but he chose that Zack Snyder film, the the something something of the Army of the Dead, is that what it's called, uh, instead. And, I mean, having seen B Bautista play Drax, I'm, I'm glad that it's John Cena playing Peacemaker. I, I really think that the the way he plays it i i don't know if batista would have been quite as spot on i i really you know they're different characters peacemaker and drax are very different characters but just the way that yeah i, I don't know and let's see and sylvester stallone voices nano nana way or king shark and it's, it's, basically the, the, there's, there's some like Groot going on with him. You know, he, he speaks in kind of broken English. He's, he seems like we're not 100% certain how much he really, understands and and like yeah and and there's um yeah i i there's really something something special with him and it's it's one second it is steve Steve G, who who did the ah, what's it called? He he did like the the physical performance. He he adds a lot to it, and and then Stallone with his voice, like you know, every so often, Stallone will be in a movie where he reminds us. Under the right circumstances, he's an incredible actor. This is this is such a strong performance. The the ah, what's the word? Yeah, as as a, a brief, you know, some other movies, some of the Rocky movies, he gives an incredible performance. Some of the Rambo movies, and. Yeah, he he's incredible in this. Like, there's real. What's the word? There's there's emotion in there. There's a like. Yeah. Now, according to behind the scenes, like, Gunn wrote King Shark specifically for Stallone, and he gladly accepted the role. Although he did make him promise that he wouldn't have to pronounce the word Ravager. And Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, The Wall, you know, she's still great. She, she run, the, the, the director of Argus who runs the Task Force X program or the Suicide Squad, she, she doesn't physically go on missions. She sits in, in the office and, you know, threatens them that if they don't do the, if they don't do it properly, she's going to blow their heads up. And, you know, she can provide, like, what's it called? Like, um, you know, guy in the chair kind of stuff. She, she, she and her, her team can, you know, they're looking at, like, satellite maps and they've got, you know, detailed files on this, that, and the other thing that they can use to help. And. And, and Jai Courtney as George Digger Harkness, or Captain Boomerang. And, let's see, yeah, Courtney stated, 
unlike Red Flag, Captain Boomerang has not changed since the events. Suicide Squad being the same shitbag liability we came to expect about in the first one. He's out there causing trouble, as you would expect. Now, I've seen him, in, in addition to the, you know, yeah, these two Suicide Squad movies, I've seen him in Alita Battle Angel, Terminator Genesis, and A Good Day to Die Hard. Like I said in my review of the first Suicide Squad movie, I like Jai Courtney in every movie I, that I've seen that he appears in. But I love him in Suicide Squad. By far, my favorite character and characterization by him. And, yeah, this keeps that up. I also remain really happy that the character is so different from the comics, where he's kind of pathetic. Deadshot is constantly humiliating him. Like... Deadshot is cool, obviously, and he's cooler than Captain Boomerang, obviously, but I, I'm really glad that the, the films haven't given us someone as just pathetic and, and nothing of just, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's great outside of the Suicide Squad comics, and maybe, or maybe he was always, maybe him being pathetic works better in solo books, I don't know, but in the yeah, he, he was probably my least favorite aspect of the Suicide Squad comics. And Peter Capaldi as Gaius Greaves, or The Thinker, highly intelligent supervillain. Actually, at first I, I was going to say I haven't seen him in anything, but he is in Smellus Sense of Snow, which my father insisted that I watch. I, I don't think it, it's It's fine, whatever, it's fine, but... I have to admit, I don't remember him from that, but yeah, you know, for a lot of people, he is Doctor Who, I'm pretty sure. I am sure, I'm just kidding. I just, it really pisses some fans off when, when you pretend to not know things like that. As long as you don't ask me what what number in the order, but yeah, I, I, I am 100% certain he played yeah, Doctor Who for a while. And also starring in the film are David Desmalchian as Abner Krill, slash polka dot man. An experiment gone wrong turned criminal in a suit covered with polka dots. Who Gunn described as the dumbest DC character of all time and hoped to turn into a tragic character for the film. It's, I, I didn't, th I, th I thought it was just going to be kind of funny and a, a little weird or whatever. I really got to care about him in, in the movie. And, yeah, it, they, they did an incredible job. It, it shouldn't work. Like, there's no way that it should work. And, yeah, and he is some, somewhat different. I, I looked at what he's like in the comics. He's not, it's, there's, there's some difference between comics and this. And, you know, for purists, and I don't, I'm not criticizing purists. I'm a purist on some things. But, yeah, it's it's definitely going to bother some people. Daniela Melchior plays Cleo Caso slash Ratcatcher 2, a bank robber described as the heart of the film by Gunn, who inherited the mantle of Ratcatcher from her father, can control rats and communicate with them, and has a pet rat named Sebastian. And this is the first thing I see her in, and it's definitely not going to be the last. I have got to see more. She, she's great. She's so good. And she is definitely the heart of the film, 100%. And I, f I forget exactly who, but there was some, someone on YouTube said that, you know, they, they hate rats, but they actually, they, they cared about rat catcher from right away. And yeah, it, it, I, I don't really have any, I don't think I've ever encountered a rat in real life. So for me, it's, it's a kind of like, Obviously, they're not. You you wouldn't want to be around them if you're not a, a rat rat catcher. Of of yeah, but I suppose that. But but no, she's she's great, and it's it's like yeah, and. That is about Let's see. 
Right. The one one critic said that the the weakest part of the movie is the human villains. Yeah, maybe. I I don't think that they were that bad, but they, you know, if, no matter how good even even in a even if everything is good, there's still one that isn't as good as the other and yeah, probably the now Taika Waititi is great in the movie. I I'm not sure if I'm gonna. Yeah, I don't think I'm I'm gonna say what exactly he plays, but he's incredible, absolutely incredible. Now, so some of the problems with the original, the 2016 movie. We don't really believe that Amanda Waller can control the Suicide Squad. What they're sent to stop is way more powerful than they are. Let's see. And what Suicide Squad is sent after is Enchantress, who Waller says she had to she she had under her control. Why don't they just send Batman and Wonder Woman? And yeah, for for this one, the those problems are not present in this movie. And let's see. And and yeah, well, you know, the twenty sixteen Suicide Squad was the DCU trying to get their own version of the Guardians, the, the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which was a huge success. And they, you know, they took this, uh, you know, kind of unknown property with, you know, characters that you don't expect you'll end up cheering on and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, the, the soundtrack, all, all this stuff. But when the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie you know, the reason that we're not just like, well, where are the Avengers? Well, they're in space. You know, the that movie takes place in outer space. It doesn't take place on Earth. You know, not that the MCU doesn't have any problems at all with, you know, where where is this or that hero? Shouldn't they show up for this? But it was, it was a huge problem in the first Suicide Squad movie. And in this one, it is not. Now, let's see. And, right, and, and another problem with the 2016 movie is Killer Croc completely disappears into the background. He takes up space. That doesn't happen with any character in this or Birds of Prey. The, the, every character in this has, like, a big moment that you'll remember for a long time. Every character in this has a personality. Like, no, it's, it's not just, like, yeah, a lot of the, the characters are badasses, but it's not just badass and, and absolutely nothing, nothing else, you know. Every single one of them has a distinct character. Now, let's see. The dialogue is is great, and they do a good job of everyone has their own voice, and what's the word? It it, it conveys characterization and exposition well. The characterization, in general, is really strong. And yeah, this is where I usually talk about if they're is one or more things in the film that really stay with you long after watching the the emotion and the the sort of yeah the the movie's heart and yeah some of some you know characters like king shark and polka dot man you know yeah now 
could see them. The cinematography is great. It's not trying to hide, like, you know, a lot, a lot of the action here is, is you know, they, they do practical effects and such. This, you know, here, here it's not just trying to, to hide how the, you know, where where the where the boundary is of the illusion that yeah you you get a good sense of let's see, and and the editing is also like this doesn't have any of the editing problems that the 2016 movie has you know the, here we have we have entire scenes it's not these short trimmed like like it's it's ridiculous when you when you watch the 2016 movie that they they took like long scenes and just trimmed them down into nothing i i get that the original movie would have been way too long but they should have just they should have said okay you know what we can't do all 10 scenes maybe we can do three of them and we'll try to see if those three can have some have some air to breathe and be full scenes. Instead, they said, well, we can't do all of all ten of them, so how about we trim all ten of them and, and not have a single proper full scene in the entire movie? And that's, yeah, here, not at all of a problem. Um, there's a ton of practical effects in this because uh, James Gunn was tired of working with CG and it really works like there's weight to it it feels like they're actually in these places and these places actually exist they're not just like they're not walking around green screens and stuff is being filled in later obviously there is some CG it would this movie would not be able to be made with no CG, but when they could, they they went and and they did a, they they actually shot in Panama to, to you know that stood as as a stand-in for Corto Maltese, and that was uh, yeah it 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 works really well. It's very convincing. And the, yeah, just real quick from Wikipedia. James Gunn said the film featured the biggest sets ever built for a Warner Brothers film, with Mikkel building a set the size of three football fields to the outside of Josenheim and a warehouse-sized jungle set was also built. And, yeah, it's, it's wild. The action is absolutely incredible, and the let's see, the the yeah the members of the team work together like happens in every X Men movie, the MCU team up movies, every DCU movie with multiple active power users on the same side, and you know you have chases on foot and in vehicles, you have physical fights, martial arts, shooting. And yeah, the 2016 movie has a problem with there's not enough variety in the action scenes. There's too much, too many scenes of people shooting other people in dark. You know, okay, I'll grant. You know, the the people with like incredible guns and such shooting. You know, av avocado men. But still, it's it's people shooting at other people. This one has way more variety. In, in the action scenes. There are some incredibly memorable setups here. And uh, let's see, I, I don't know if... I suppose there's not that much that I can really give away without... There, there's, a, there's this bit where, at, at least once in the movie, Peacemaker and Bloodsh... almost called him Bloodshot. That is a terrible... I don't know if the comic book character is terrible, but the movie adaptation 
of the comic book character, but, you know, both that both that character and that movie, the, the movie and the character in the movie. I don't know about the comic, but in the movie, boy, is it terrible. Anyway, Blood Sport, Peacemaker and Blood Sport are trying to outdo each other. You know, you, you can you can maybe kind of think of like how there's the the like with with Legolas and Gimli, you know, they're they're competing. But, you know, where, where Legolas and Gimli compete over how many to kill, basically Peacemaker and Bloodsport are kind of showing off. They're like, look at how casually I can kill. Like, you know, look, I can kill someone. You know, I can, I can fire my gun and shoot someone without even looking directly at them. Well, I can shoot something near someone and then that thing will kill them. And And they just do this over and over. And that's... You know that's simultaneous. It's it's cool and it's fun and it's like tense, but it also it's, there's a ton of personality to it. Like I, it almost must have happened in at least one other action movie, but I, off the top of my head, I can't really come come up with an example. And let's see the. The, the movie has good use of gore and violence and some really creative kills. Let's see. And, and let's see. The, the music is, is great. Like, it's, yeah, once again, the 2016 film has problems with the music music playing to like the the music will play for for way too few seconds and and barely like you know the audience might get into okay we're going to hear this song and then just cuts off and another one starts like a minute later or something and then it's also there there's such obvious choices that just like you you would like if you were making a a if if you made a joke trailer for the movie these are the songs you would choose you know oh look Har harley quinn Nobody owns her. She's a super freak, and and you know sympathy for the devil, for the just yeah, all the all these various, and you know in in the Guardians of the Galaxy volumes one and two, it's these carefully chosen, effective songs that have really strong effect. You know the they'll they'll fit the scene, but it won't be like oh you know wink wink nudge nudge it it will actually serve the and and yeah it it does that here it it doesn't you know in the guardians of the galaxy movies it's it's like quinn quill quinn oh harley quinn yeah too many names quill it's peter quill playing music that he grew up on and you know that's why we're hearing the music, but the yeah that doesn't happen in this movie. I either I'm I'm not sure the music. I, th I think the music is mostly. I I never get it right. Is it diegetic or is it non diegetic? It, the characters in the movie can't hear the music a lot of the time, at least. It's it's for the it's for the audience, but you know it doesn't have to be. And yeah, it works incredibly well. And it has an incredible soundtrack, like Birds of Prey does. And and there's some black comedy, some blue comedy. And the... 
And yeah, so so the twenty sixteen movie did some terrible some you know they had some ideas that could work, but they did a terrible job. You know, the 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 way that the movie was was edited together was a complete mess. But Birds of Prey picked up on some of the things and did them right. And this does as well. You know, the the yeah, Birds of Prey did the the freeze frame intro with you know it the the name of the character written and like a some, something important about them also written. But this one doesn't do freeze frames, but it does do like f yeah flashbacks, scenes where it's very clearly told from one character's point of view, and the the. Yeah, I, that is about right. And another problem with the 2016 movie is how generic the last third is. That's not a problem in Birds of Prey. It's not a problem here either. Like the the some of the the third act once again, sadly spoiled by the trailers, but it really like. There's stuff in there that I had not seen coming at all. And this this is one of those movies where, you know, you really have to suspend disbelief. And, yeah, if, if you know... Let's see. And it's, it's worth it. The, the pacing is quite good. Uh, I, I really didn't know if, if you know, it's, it's difficult to do this sort of thing well, but it, it manages to, the, the, the thing that the 2016 movie tries to show the, the, like, for example, when we meet Deadshot, we, the movie wants to show multiple different scenes, you know, wants to show this is what it looks like when he's doing his mercenary job. This is what it looks like when he's trying to help his daughter. You know, this this is what it looks like when he has free access to any gun he wants for, you know, all all these things. And it's just, if you do that much, you, you know, you, you can't do that much with every single character. And this movie, like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, you know, Gunn is really good at this. You, you give a strong introduction with, like, some exposition that tells us who this person is, and you have them say or do something basically immediately when we meet them. Something that tells the audience who this character is and that's the yeah he's he's just he's incredibly good at it like there's there are character introductions in this movie that should not work the the characters are too ridiculous and you think i mean you could you could explain that concept for an hour and there would still be unanswered questions but somehow he he manages to make it work and yeah, I did not note how long this is, but I think I think I read that it's like two hours and thirteen minutes. It's definitely worth the the investment of time. And I mean, okay, yeah. So when it's you know movies that are in theaters, I know a lot of people don't like walking out of a movie. You know the the like. Hypothetically, if you if you're watching this, I'd say if the yeah thirty or forty minutes in, if you're if you're not interested in what happens after that, then yeah you're not really gonna then then you might as well not continue watching. And. Let's see. 
in his Guardians of the Galaxy movies, James Gunn is very clearly a feminist, and yeah, that that shows here as well. You know, you can really tell the the writing of, for example, Harley Quinn. Really, it's there's a just huge difference. Like you would never mistake these for each other. I don't think that David Iyer is a misogynist. I think he did think that what he did with Harley Quinn was empowering. Because when you look at the way he, you know, several of his movies have strong female characters. And the, I mean, for, for a while, his, he, his camera didn't leer at women. But then... I think was it I think sabotage was the first where it did and then it happened again in suicide squad but you know James Gunn is better at doing female empowerment than David Iyer is now so the the best element of the movie is just how much it makes you care about this ridiculous group of, of, like, you know, people with absurd powers and just these ridiculous personalities and such. Let's see, the uh, worst aspect, I think, I think Gunn does a good job of covering it up. But there are times, yeah, I, I can't really, I can't talk about it without spoiling at least a little bit. James Gunn does a good job at covering it up, but at the end of the day, parts of this story are significantly more, like, crowd-pleasing and, and kind of, like, it, it delivers what we feel like we would want to see more than what makes the most sense for these characters necessarily and he does a much better job of it than the 2016 movie which also tried to kind of move outside of and I get it if if you can't move outside of it at all it's going to be extremely constraining but yeah no more spoilers for the time being Oh right, and I, I I don't think it's a big deal, but it it will bother some people. And let's see. So yeah, I already mentioned the trailers give away too much. Now the the cover and poster do not give away too much, and they give you a good idea of what it's like, so if you like the cover and poster, you know, you'll like the, the movie. The movie does not have a lot of metaphors, difficult to understand elements. There's not a lot of stuff to analyze. There there is some like I really appreciate it though it it there was definitely satire and social comedy like like in the comics and and like the first movie definitely thought that it it was now, yeah, the movie's way better than it has any right to be. It's it's it shouldn't work this well. I've I've seen I've seen movies that make much less much much smaller like uh, let's see like moving outside of of what you would expect from it, and those movies it just falls apart. But here it somehow works. Now. Yeah, so I checked. Yeah, I haven't updated, but, but hours ago, the tomato meter was 96% with 141 reviews. And let's see. That, so that's certified fresh. And. Yeah, that makes a, a ton of sense. And on Metacritic, it had a 76 out of 100. 
of 35 critic reviews. Now, let's see. That is, yeah, so I think ultimately it's going to come down to a, yeah, nine dead on arrival villains out of 10. And that brings us to the thought section start. So, thought section start, disclaimers. If you don't care about these disclaimers, I'm trying to keep them short and relevant, but you might explain very, you can skip right ahead to the section of your choice in the description box. I often try to talk very fast during the disclaimers. Since a lot of this is very standard information, I'm not going to keep speaking as fast as sometimes do during this section. Once I get into the rest of the video itself, with that said, please do note that some of the specific discussion of the movie may be in this section. So, from here on out, spoilers for the movie as well as for earlier entries in the franchise, no verbal warnings, unless I spoil something, not, not this movie, not the franchise. And, yeah, so I briefly want to, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be criticizing any violence of gore, but just in case, I don't have a problem with violence of gore in general, the thing is one of my favorite horror movies and in general, also Cronenberg's The Fly, Video Drum, etc. And I don't have a problem with film sexuality, nudity, disturbing, and upsetting material in general. Monster is one of my favorite movies. So, yeah. The rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of well thoughts. Some is analysis, some is anesthesia, riff tracks, and other jokes. And, uh, yeah. Time codes are the sections on the description box. The section right after this is thoughts I have while watching in chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, or like. The section after that is thoughts I have before watching. Now, let's see. The, does the movie appear to have empathy for the least likable characters? Yeah, I I don't I don't think there's a single character in this movie that the that the movie has absolutely zero empathy for. Like the most despicable would probably be Waller, especially once we realize, you know, like, the, the, I mean, yeah, we get a really big clue early on when she, like, in, in the trailer, we didn't really know a lot of details about exactly what, like, what was Waller threatening. Tyla? I think her name was Tyla. Blood sports daughter, but in the movie, I mean, she literally said, she she said, if I don't help her, you know, I or yeah, I can I can make it so that she goes to Bell Reve, and she's she goes on the Suicide Squad. I will put her on a suicide mission. She will die. Your sixteen year old daughter will die if you don't do what I say. And then near the end, she's like, no, 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 it's fine that Starro's, you know, running around. He's not a threat to the U.S. now that, you know, the, the, ah, uh, what's it called? The, the Corotro Maltese, the, the, the coup leadership were, you know, they were going to use Starro against America. That would have been a problem. And it would have been a problem if, Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the yeah that and and if the the information about how it was Americans who who were behind it, but the the and Starro himself like one of you know right before he dies, you know one of them is like, I was happy, floating out in space, you know, and let's see the the. Yeah, yeah. I think pretty much every character there's at least a little bit of empathy for, no matter how despicable they, you know, like, 
Waller, she's not doing it because she she thinks it might be a fun thing to do. She legitimately does think that this is, you know, what's necessary for, you know, American interest. I have to wonder, maybe this is, maybe it was just a misdirect, but in the trailer, like, there's a, there's a thing that, like, what's the word? In, in, like, one of the trailers, there's this bit of Viola Davis, not, not in character, but, like, in interview, and she said, oh, you know, I, I can press a button and blow them up. I, I really, I, I press the button a lot, or something like that, and she does this really sinister laugh, and they add, like, a, a, an echo to it or something, so like, I mean, she literally doesn't, she doesn't blow up anyone, she tries to there at the end, she said, she wants to, she's going to, but then she gets knocked out, but I think they, they did that to kind of put us in the mindset of she's the bad guy here, she's, you know, she, she it's, it's one thing that she maybe needs to blow up, you know, someone, but she shouldn't be that happy about it, you know. So, sometimes in these kinds of movies, women are disposable, useless, not strong, sexualized against their will, and or only for that purpose. Sexual assault or rape without film exploring the effects of it. Yeah, this does a really great job on, like, Harley, like, yeah, you know, she has sex with that guy, but she wanted to. There's no doubt about it. Like, and actually, it's, it's, and, and the movie doesn't judge her for it. Like, how easy would it have been? Like, it's R-rated. And Margot Robbie has done nude scenes before. How easy would it have been for the movie to get, like, gratuitous? But no, we don't, we, we don't even see the, we don't, we don't really see the sex much. At all. Like, like, we see, you know, there's that comical bit where, like, he, they're they're like they crash in against that the the gun ah uh, what's it called was was it like a closet glass whatever you know the the and and that kind of thing but it's not like this ridiculous gratuitous sex scene that you know some let's see was the I guess yeah yeah just briefly spoiling die hard with a vengeance there's a sex scene in that movie near the end and john mctiernan apparently decided well we're gonna get an r rating anyway it's we're not gonna get bumped up in rating by having a sex scene so why not have a sex scene i'm not saying that that's wrong I'm saying this movie could have done that, and I'm glad it didn't. No more spoilers for Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah, like, it, they, they very easily could have had some, some, but, but instead it's, and, and, you know, Harley frees herself. She don't need no man. She, like, I, th I thought that was great. Like, she, she pretends that she's like really out of it and they keep like tasing her and she pretends to be completely you know so one of them leaves and the other turns his back on her and you never ever want to turn your back on harley quinn if if you're not 100 like actually yeah no i don't think it no matter who you are you probably don't want to turn your back on on harley quinn I th hmm. I guess maybe Poison Ivy, but other than that, just just don't do it. Like she, and she, we we see that she was completely faking. She wasn't even a little bit out, and she, like, grabs his 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 head with her feet and snaps it, and then she uses her feet. In uh, I can, I can only imagine that you know Tarantino wrote that that bit chooses her her feet to to get the keys 
and then, you know, get un unlock her cuffs by getting her leg up, you know, just, yeah, really, really awesome. Honestly, the, the, it was some of my favorite stuff. I, I really love what, anyway, I'll, I'll get to that in the, let's see. The, you know, the movie does have a number of Corto of Maltese, I, I, it's South Americans being kind of treated as just disposable, but then there at the end, you know, when, when Starro it is like the, the kaiju attack by Starro there at the very end, that legitimately did, you know, there's some, there's real humanizing of the, the, ah, what's it called? Yeah, the, the Corto Maltese civilians, but a lot of Corto Maltese people are killed by the squad and such and it's kind of you know oh you know they're not white so but the movie does also you know the the element that Sol Soria is working on a yeah a, a coup you know that is that is what it is it's just it's the kind of coup that will lead to democracy but you know that that is something that's important to the several of the major characters and they do end up getting it and it's treated as a win you know this this movie could very easily have had like no no it's okay the white guys fixed everything now you know they they went into another country killed a bunch of people blew up some buildings everything is fine now and you know but instead they actually but but yeah it is it's not the, there's there's not there's there is a higher than zero amount of gratuitous death by brown people and some of it is played for like laughs and such so that's yeah I think they did an incredible job not overexposing the threat like I I thought that Starro would show up later than he did. He and and I really like that we actually like again. Sadly, this trailer spoiled what he looks like in his full starfish glory. But like when you first see, you just you see like the one arm, or you see the little tendril things, or you see the big eye, but. Only, you know, at the very end of the movie do you see the entire thing walking around. I really thought they did a great job of not making it to... We don't, we don't look at him for so long that he gets... That we just become adjusted to him. And when, I mean, when you think about it, I, I think from when we get a really good look at... Starro in present day. I'm not talking about the the footage of the of the astronauts. From then and until the movie's end, or until his death, I suppose you should say, thirty or forty minutes, and and yet we never become like there was never a time when I wasn't like scared of the of the giant kaiju. Now, my making jokes, and this should not necessarily be taken as, as me thinking the thing I'm joking about is actually bad. Me wanting to make light of the subject, etc. I simply find it difficult not to MST for gay and over honest. Everything I watch now. That brings us to notes. Taken while watching, and since it was a theater movie, I got my notepads. Let's see. All of, of one, and then like not a huge amount of the second one, but I really like that they literally, like, they open in a prison. 
we you know we're gonna use music to set the scene. I, f I forget what it's called, but it's the, the, the Johnny Cash song that he actually performed in prison. Like, that's... See, th this is the kind of wit that the first movie needs. Like, you're, you're seeing Henry Rooker sitting there, you know, bouncing the ball, and Johnny Cash, you know... Yeah, that's that's so good. And we see that... Savant, you know, he, he spots the bird, and so he throws the ball so that it bounces and and hits the bird. And then, you know, he, like, wipes the blood off. I really love that later, you know, a bird of the same species comes at his corpse once he's been brutally killed by, you know, like, Amanda Waller might as well have been, you know, just playing with the ball, the, the way she got him killed. And through Savant, we get the rules of, you know, the, the explosive thing, just the, okay, so we see the, the injection, we see the, the x-ray thing, and she says, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to detonate the explosive. And we get a roll call, and the, the walking in front of the flag. And and Harley explains why she got why she's in jail again. I had a little road rage in a bank. And we see that Waller's people bet on who will die in the Suicide Squad. And once you know some of the some of them are dead, like some of them are like pl playing with the money and just like loving having won a lot of money. I really liked the the talking on the on the flight there, like the just yeah, so so many such great yeah. I I I quite liked how I mean basically there were a couple of, of characters that were way too gullible and then there were a couple of characters that are messing with them and just like stuff like it's is that a dog? You think that's a dog? What 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 kind of what kind of dog? Tell me what what kind of I, I don't know every dog breed you know and and Harley's like is that a werewolf? She sat me next to a werewolf. <laughs> come 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 down! It's Weasel. He's harmless. Well, he's not harmless. He killed twenty seven children, but he's he agreed to be on this mission. We think. And and you know when when they all go out of the plane, so did anyone make sure to check if Weasel can swim? And he's like, you know, and Savant grabs him and gets him. Just wow. But but yeah, and and the you know so so. T D T T T D K, that's that's what you're called, right? Yeah. Well, what's it stand for? Well, that's, that's my name. Your, it's it's not your name. It's just letters. Well, all names are made of letters. Just wow. And and we we see that Blackguard sold out the the squad. And so he's like, he's thinking, if I stay back here with the rest of the squad, then like the, the, you know, and, and they realize that I sold them out, they're going to shoot me. So I have to walk up, you know, to, towards them so they won't shoot me and they'll only, but, but if my teammates, if my squad mates get up and try to shoot me, they'll be shot, you know, but then he gets shot himself. And we realize this was exactly what Waller wanted to have like she knew that Blackguard was going to try to sell them out so she had both you know she had two teams and the other team didn't even know like Bloodsport and the others didn't even know about the other team until they just happen upon Flag in, in with with, Sol, with Salsoria
I really appreciate that the movie is 100% upfront about the fact that TDK is ridiculous. Like, you know, he, he detaches his arms and then he's like kind of awkwardly, like he's grabbing at them and, and smacking them and, and just, it's absolutely ridiculous. And basically, the the squad, the, the team one, die on on the beach, you know. And that's a, in the comics, something like that might happen, but it wouldn't be all of the, the you know. F to to get that many squad members dying in action, you'd have to go for like through several books. But that is kind of what they're doing with these movies. They're they're not taking one book. And and throwing two hundred million and at it and, and no they, they take from from multiple different ones. Let's see, but yeah, we we realized that Waller knew Black Widow would betray, and that was exactly what she she was basically planning on it. And the the what's the word? The, the yeah we the viewer actually didn't know like we we were when when blackguard revealed it we were like oh this is this is not going to end well hopefully the squad can get out and then we're watching as the entire squad is killed like nobody survives except for flag and harley and then the the ah uh, what's the word Yeah, so Waller was actually 100% ready to lose both Flag. I mean, yeah, Harley, she doesn't have any emotional... But you might think that at least Flag, I mean, he hasn't done anything wrong. Although I guess maybe she's upset at him, like, breaking the... In in the first movie, when he, he breaks the thing that is supposed to blow them up. And anyway... You know, we, the audience, are like, oh, they, the mission is a complete failure now. Like, the, the every squad member is dead, and the the military, the Corto Maltese military, know that the, you know, that's, there's, there's no way. But no, it turns out that that was how Waller dealt with the military. She, she knew that if she, she could trick Blackguard into selling them out. And then the the ah, what's the word that would that would mean that all of the military was in that one spot, and it would make it a lot easier for the other team to get yeah. And yeah, the you know then then it jumps to three days earlier and. I've mentioned this before. I think that was what I think that would have been a good way to start the 2016 movies. You know, the first thing we see is the the helicopter crashing in Midway City. Was that what it was called? I I forget. But you know, the, the crashing, rolling over, and then the squad members walk out of the helicopter and and. It's the first time you, watching the movie in the theater at least, see all these colorful characters and then flash back to earlier and then you can have more with, but as it is, that movie takes forever to get to the mission and it, like, it can almost feel like they're never going to get there because they keep, they, they're never, they, they just, they're not gaining, gaining any traction, like, every scene starts over like the you know first we have Amanda Waller explaining who Deadshot is and then you know that she, she goes through some of the, the other then she goes to meet some other people and then she explains who Deadshot is and and it just and and then she goes and meets Deadshot and we see what he can do we already knew that like it's but anyway I I thought this movie did a really good I love its use of like text like the the it's something you know you see it in comic books because they can't just have like voice over or diet you know they they yeah but in in movies you don't see it as much 
as as this does it, but it's it's yeah, it's really clever. Like there's that bit where it's you know Operation Jotunheim, but first Operation Harley. And we're told that Bloodsport was basically born and raised to kill, you know. He 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 had a revolver in his hand in his crib. And Bloodsport and his daughter shout at each other. And I, I saw someone point out that basically Bloodsport feels like he can't he can't be a good father. So because of that, he basically you know he's trying to get his daughter to break away from him because he's f afraid that he will be the same father to you know be yeah be as harmful of a father to her as his father was to him and Okay, I'm just going to see if I can figure out. Okay, so that's I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to have to move on. I don't know if I loved the the millennial jokes with Ratcatcher 2 like she's Oh, uh, she's lazy. She sleeps in, and she's always sleeping and sleepy. She whines about having to get out of bed. I I don't know if I loved it, but you know, it's if you like that kind of joke, I think they got them. I I think they did a good job on them. I think you will like them. I quite liked when they're being given the, the briefing and all of them have at least one question to ask. The and the the thing with like Harley survives and was his character also named Javelin? I, f I forget, but yeah, you know, he he gives her the javelin on his deathbed and he says take this what was it use it for and then he dies and she's like use it for what i don't know what to use it for now and the the you know near the end of the movie she's like now i know what to use it for and at first we're not completely sure and then you know she she jumps and i mean did, did she pole vault? I forget if she pole vaults in that specific instance. And also just when she finds it again, she's like, ah, oh, there, there it is. You know, and they, yeah, one of them just put it there because they just, they had to put it somewhere and they weren't going to throw it out because it looks kind of, it might be expensive. But let's, let's just put it here for now, you know? And yeah, so she, she dives into the, and, and once she has made that hole, then the rats can go in there and just eat away. And, I mean, that is, you know, if you could compel rats to gnaw at that, yeah, they probably would be able to. I mean, they basically, they, they go so far in that, like, they they eat its brains, Starro's brains, to the point where there's so little left that he dies. And that's, yeah, like, rats... They 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 gnaw and they keep going until they they're done. So yeah, and and we see polka dot man like his skin breaks out in polka dots and he like vomits polka dots and then he then he's all fine and and it's explained and just yeah. Now. Oh, huh, maybe, okay, I'm just going to 
really quickly see if I can figure out what that other King Shark Bulk Broken England. What on earth does that mean? I mean, I have to, you know, I write them in hand. I, I'm not, you know, if I, if I had light, I would be disturbing the other people in the theater. So I have to use short, short uh, abbreviations and such, but I have no idea. Yeah. And King Shark almost eats Rat Catcher and you know, Bloodsport shoots him a bunch to to stop him. And then and then Rat Catcher is like Did you did you really almost eat me on? I, I don't believe that. He's he's got such kind eyes. And it was like it was Sebastian, cause Sebastian saw. So he, he conveys to her, no, 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 he, he just tried to eat you. And instead of, like, she basically kind of, she treats him with compassion and humanity. And, and I saw a, a YouTuber point out, you know, for the entire rest of the movie, King Shark never tries to eat another team member. You know, he, she, she's basically like, wouldn't you rather have friends than food? And... Or, you know, or, or look, have friends and have to wait a little longer before you can eat or something like that, you know. And it's it's kind of sweet. King Shark does try to be a friend and, you know, he, he makes, you know, when, when they're doing the, the, the explosive, he, he makes, he, he fashions his into a into a doll that looks like peacemaker and and peacemaker is like okay that's that's very nice na 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 way but just put it put it there okay it's not gonna look like me but just that's that's a pretty good wow. I quite appreciate that the teammates argue a lot it feels like they actually, yeah, you know, it, it makes sense because they are so different, you know. And we see the 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 squad kill. You know, later we realize that they are the 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 uh, freedom fighters. And it's such a clever, like, once they've killed a bunch of them, then they they get into the, you know, and Rick Flag is in there, and they actually yeah they thought that they thought that they would be rescuing him, or or. Waller thought that they would be rescuing Flag. They they had the, you know, they found the the tracker. They they found him via satellite. Okay, he's in there. So they send the the squad in there, to you know. And it turns out that he and and you know last we saw he was surrounded by brown people with guns. And now we see no no, no that these are the good guys though, you know. And and so Zoria she realizes they killed all these men. And she literally says, typical American. And it it's such a... It's hard for me to put into words how much I love that. Because it really did, like, that's exactly right. Like, that's American foreign policy. Just killing a bunch of non-white people in another country. And, you know... After after a while, finally realizing, oh wait, those those were actually our those were our allies. Oh, that ah, uh, that didn't go exactly as I had as I had thought it might. And it also comments on we the viewer 
we're so used to in American Hollywood blockbusters when the I mean in this case it's not the heroes anti-heroes when when the when the people we're following when they're going around killing a bunch of people we kind of just accept well they're the bad guys and the movie basically says so just because they so so you have this these these okay they're not all americans but the the yeah you you have and they're definitely not all white um you have tasks they're sent by the us government you have these people working for the us government and they're just, they're going around killing people and you just assume that they're the bad guys like it's it's such a clever cuz we we're so used to it and by bringing that up it kind of it plants that seed in our brain this movie is going to criticize american foreign policy so later when we're told no 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 starro they were found by american astronauts you know this was but the, and and they 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 had the the thinker do all these What's the word? The the ah, they had the thinker do all these. Yeah, they they had the thinker do. Do all these experiments. But they couldn't do them on U.S. soil. It's it's really really clever, and it is like, I mean, I have to admit, before that I hadn't really thought about, well, whose astronauts were they? And I mean, I guess if if you had asked me before that reveal, I guess I would have said, I mean, they must be like, well. If this, if if Corto Maltese is communist, then maybe, maybe Russian astronauts grabbed Starro, and they and then they gave them to these other communists. I I guess you know, but no, it it and and it was like when the thinker the thinker is almost insulted that like he's like, did you really buy that? Come on, man. Think about it. You know, and it, yeah, it's it's incredibly clever. I I I really love when movies like this go and and really make you question things like that because so many movies for for decades, you know, if like I lost count of how many movies how many american action movies the bad guys were and i'm not i'm 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 not saying one or more of these i'm saying all of these foreign from a foreign country communists and drug dealers or uh, drug runners so many times it's it's been that because well, that helps justify xenophobia. It helps justify the war on drugs. All these things, and and here we have a movie that really questions it. Yeah, absolutely love it. <laughs> and we're told that Polka Dot, the way the way that he manages to to kill someone is that he imagines that they're his mother. And you know, at first they're like, you know, so sorry is like. Well, why wasn't I warned of your arrival by my men? And they're like, ah, uh, no, uh, no, you know what? They left. Actually, yeah, we, we got here. The, I, we don't know where they are, but they, they must have left before, you know. And and I forget if King Shark, King Shark spits out like, I, I don't think that I, I kind of felt, I thought they were gonna do like a joke where So Sorry was gonna say. That ring belongs to my, you know, this and this. He he was, you know, I never met a, a better man and you ate him or something like that. But the, anyway, 
maybe I end up on the cutting room floor or something, but, you know, it's, yeah, Polka Dot Man completely ruins it by saying, I imagine all of them were my mother and I killed them. If I if I had to point to like one image from the film that's like the funniest, it's either the squad all in all as polka dot mother, or it's Starro as polka dot mother, like the the giant you know, and you just and he manages to like cut off. One of the one of the legs, and then like Starro like grabs the the leg that's missing, and then all the humans that are possessed by Starro's also grab that leg, even though there's nothing wrong with their leg. And let's see. yeah, we we realize they killed freedom fighters. Very typical American foreign policy. And Starro is explained, and we see footage from the the you know when when he was first discovered. I thought they did an incredible job. Of that. I mean, if you really think about it, maybe five times or more in this movie, like the movie will literally briefly stop for maybe two or five minutes, and a character will literally explain something, like just giving all. I mean, it's always a character explaining it to a character that doesn't already know. They don't do that stupid thing that's in way too many movies. And it's always so compelling, and there's very frequently, like, footage backing it up. So, it, I mean, when you see the, the, the astronauts, and they're like, Ah, oh, Star, look at it. This is a... and, and then the little ones come out, and they're like, Ah, oh, what's... what's this? Ah! That's, that's, that's so good. That's, and, and he's literally, he, he's literally just explaining the, the, yeah, it's, it's, it, it works somehow. These are the kinds of things you do in comic books because you can't, like, in comic books, there's a lot of backfilling I, th I think that's what it's called. Like, when, when you, you have a bunch of stuff happen and then suddenly, in comes a character you've never met who talks about something you've never heard before and then they're like oh yeah for the last 60 years i've been doing this this and this and that other character i paid you know for their research that's why there was you know there's a lot of that in comic books in movies that kind of stuff grinds the movie to a halt and people hate it and somehow this movie made it work and i i think there's like five times you know like Starro, there's there's Polka Dot Man's powers and and backstory. Let's see, you have uh, uh, Rat Catcher, Rat Catcher Two talking about her father, which actually shows up twice. It shows up there at the very very end again. Let's see. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah, there there might be others, but the that's what I can think of. So I really like like Harley, like they 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 capture her and then they're like okay, it's it's creepy that they say, you know, put on this dress. But after that, then they're like, you know, here are your servants. You're you're going to live here now and, you know, I and and they they do the the shot where you know an attractive person walks out of a bath and the the other person is like stunned. I'm not surprised that they they like they're. I'm straight. If I can just briefly address the other straight men. It's okay. We'll we'll live. If there's like a naked dude on camera, we'll live. I don't know why people freaked out over it in the Watchmen movie, but you know, in this one, I was half. Ex 
I, I wasn't particularly surprised when, you know, he walks out of the bath and he's wearing, like, short, I, I mean, okay, actually, to be fair, that would also have been creepy, to be fair. Even, you know, Harley is attracted to him, but it would be creepy if he was naked when they, when they met, so that's, but, but yeah, it, I, I don't know, it, it felt a little weird that there was absolutely no male nudity. But then I guess, I mean, hmm, there really isn't any nudity at all, is there? So it is... Oh, wait, yeah, I, th I think there was maybe a little bit of nudity in the, in the club. But other than that, there was, yeah. But, let's see, I, I really like that, I mean, it... It played like, I, I saw someone else say that it was like a rom-com. You know, she falls in love with, I, I don't remember his name, but the president. And he falls in love with her, and he's like, so you want to get married? You know, this is like, this is, I'm going to I'm gonna get a little stereotypical here. I, I don't mean to be insulting, but this is supposed to be like, this is, what a young, what every young woman dreams of, you know, a, a powerful rich man will, you know, what's it called, swipe her off her feet, yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about, and, you know, they'll get married, and, I mean, they consummate the marriage right after the proposal, before the ceremony, and, I really love the, the, and, and it is like, it is legitimately a funny, like twisted, like she is a hero to the Corto Maltese people and their leader because she's always fighting the American establishment. Like this idea that she would be like a hero to these people who, like that's, that's really, really funny. You know, she's this, I mean, she thinks of herself as just a mess. And we think of herself, of herself, of her as this really chaotic, you know, unstable, un, like, is, is this someone that we can, we can trust, that we can, you know, is she dangerous, this kind of stuff. But he's like, I mean, you fight the American government, that's, that's exactly what I want from, you know, just, and and the the montage where they're really happy and and all the birds and the and the thing with like oh they said that ah oh, you should you should have shown them the birds and I really really love that like like right after the you know, like he basically thinks okay she is one hundred percent with me now you know she I I don't need to impress her and so he. He kind of lets go, and he he unfiltered. He starts saying the kinds of things that he would be saying, you know, if he like to a, a prisoner, maybe. You know, this he's saying things that he's thinking. He's he's not like yeah, you know. And he talks about like Nazi experiments in Jotunheim, how thousands died in the experiments, and she. Like, and, and, I th let's see, I think he turns around to face her, and then suddenly he just, he's, he's shot, and he falls over, and she's like, you're really attractive and, and smart, but I promise myself, if I ever, you know, I've, I've had some bad luck with guys, I promise myself, if I ever found another man, I would really watch out, it's, it's that, that I fell for. I would really watch out for red flags, Ex experiments, you know, not not to experiments, that's a red flag. So, you know, and, and she's like, now, I know, I know what you, you know, Harley, Harley how could you do this? You know, the, the, if, if you weren't, if you weren't about to bleed to death, you would be, you'd be going like, Harley, you can't do this. And I'd be like, stop screaming. I'm right in front of you. It's this, this imaginary conversation that she's having. Well, well, this guy is, is bleeding out right in front. And, just, and she's like, I can't believe this thing was loaded. You know, and, and she, it was set up, set up and payoff. When they were like, you know, having sex or about to have sex, 
one of the things that they like clashed up against was this like th th there were a bunch of guns there you know so she like she didn't pick up the gun at that moment but she noticed oh there's there's guns there and so when he starts talking about nazi experiments like she has a good 30 seconds i think just walk you know quietly softly walk over there grab a gun walk back take aim and wait for the exact right moment to shoot and then that's it you know and just yeah you know she was like i mean okay it's probably not loaded but i might as well try and you know when when the like there's one point where waller is like golf she's practicing golf because she's like oh i'm gonna have to golf with the senator it's gonna be really embarrassing because I'm not good at this. So we we know okay. So there's a golf club there, and then when she's knocked down later, the golf club is what is used. And it's like we we knew that there was a golf club there, and Amanda wasn't using it at that moment. Like you know, like it's it's one thing. Like let's hypothetically say that she she has like a knife, but she usually has it in her sh at, um, the sheath she usually has her knife sheathed but suddenly someone grabs her knife and it was on the it, you know apparently i guess she left it on the table and it's like well why would she leave it on the table if she has a sheath but no there's she's when she's not using the golf club she's not like hiding it away she trusts the people that she works with not to like grab it and and hit her and it's also like if they're going to hit her with something you know, a golf club, oh, yeah, that can do some damage, you know, that, yeah, you you maybe want to keep an eye on her that she doesn't suddenly wake up and, and take back over, but you can take her down with that, like, let's, if there wasn't, like, what would they have used, like, a coffee cup or something, like, you need something with some weight behind it, and the, some of the politicians burn all of the birds, that was, I appreciate that we at least don't see it. We hear it, and that's bad enough, but we don't see it at all. And the polka dot. So it's a it's an extraterrestrial virus, and you know, polka dot man and his siblings, almost all of them died due to the experiments. I I don't know. I I just feel like someone should have told them, you know. Look, if life makes you lemons, you send those lemons back. You demand to see life's manager. That's how you handle a situation like that. But then then we see that everyone looks like his mom to him. That's, yeah. Kudos to that actress who who stood in for... for I mean... Yeah, yeah. Just and, and when he's dancing in the club, the women he's dancing with also look like... Yeah. Yeah, and there's the, the checkpoint with the killing all the guards. And and the so Soria is like, okay, I've got some, you know, normal clothes that you people can wear so you can get in, but Nanawe, he's gonna have to stay here. He he can't blend in. And he's like, I wear a disguise. Oh, really? What kind of disguise? Fake mustache. And just the wow. And and Bloodsport even says, you know, if that was a good disguise, we'd have to kill you because we don't know this big shark with a fake mustache. You know, just wow. And and he's like he's so upset about it. Like he's like, I, I thought it was gonna work. I thought my fake mustache was going to work. And we get Rat Catcher's backstory, and you know, and it, it's it's this kind of like Bloodsport says, "I bet you have daddy issues," and then she says something like, "There's no issue with how much I loved my dad," or something like that. And then she explains her backstory, and it's like, 
that daddy issues. Yeah, to, he's he's right. He he he's got you. That I, I mean, I guess maybe it's a language thing that she didn't, or is it supposed to be like a millennial thing that she's not good at understanding herself? I don't know. Maybe it was a little hard. No, the the millennial jokes they were kind of, they were funny. The the like Amanda Waller, Amanda freaking Waller shows up and she's like, "It's time, come." And she's like, "Oh, I didn't I didn't sleep enough. I'm so tired. I'm not good when I'm not when I haven't had enough sleep." Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I forgive you. Come on, you know, just and and yeah, it was it was funny. She she delivered the jokes very well. And they drink as they're waiting for the thinker, and they, they dance some. And Bloodsport grabs the thinker. I I quite liked like the the thing with, you know, they basically let themselves get caught, and then Ratcatcher and Polka Dot Man, I think. You know, then they go and free them. And the, you know, the military all come in and they're like, everybody has to show their papers. I think this scene is what it looks like to a conservative when they hear that some places ask you to show a corona passport. And, and the... The the rat catcher is trying to con compel thinker to do what they ask, and she says, "How would you like what was it a dozen rats eating their way through your your ass or something like that?" And he gets this like look in his face, and he's like. I think my answer to that question might surprise. Boy, I hope this will. This is gonna ruin someone's like fond memories of Doctor Who, and James Gunn is one hundred percent here for it. Like that is just wow. And and when you later realize, you know, he helped conduct all, or when you see how awful some of these experiments that he conducted were, it's like well. I guess the the rats up the ass thing. I mean, he's he's a sick fuck. He he has these unbelievably disgusting ideas. So, yeah, honestly, it's I could see how it might be. That, yeah. Let's see, and what does that say? Oh, right, the t touch of death. That that was a, a quite fun like the, you know he's he says it in several different languages and then the other guy's like ah yeah you you can't actually do that you can't plan for that it can happen you can't plan for it and then the other guy's like oh that's what the amateurs think and then all of them do the the you know touch of death thing that's and and the the car spins around and I thought it was. A, a like some some countries import American cars and I think that's definitely the cultural Maltese people m must definitely have imported some American cars because they explode if you touch them in an action scene so that's that's what's going on here seriously that was that was pretty fun and Yeah, some stuff that I already talked about, Harley Quinn freeing herself and such. And yeah, the action has weight, it feels real. I really liked, you know, Harley Harley like firing all these guns and you've got the javelin, you've got the cartoon birds and flowers. 
and what is that from? Oh, right, uh, Harley meets Team Two. And Thinker drives them into Jotunheim. And the slow-mo walk through the the rain. That was that was really great shot. And it's just you know, and, and I th what was it like what one of them says something like, Oh, I like the rain, and another one says, It makes for great cover, and so we get the shot of them walking towards and at first we can't see any of them, then slowly each of them walk close enough to the camera that we can see them through all the rain. And then there's the action scene where it uses the fact that they're having trouble seeing the team. I thought they did an incredible job with this movie. No two action scenes are the same, despite the fact that for a lot of it, it is the same people and the same abilities. Like. How many different times do we see Peacemaker firing a gun? You know, but there's it never gets to be just, oh, well, we've seen that before. And they manage to, yeah, they, they lock in, they get inside, in, into Jotunheim and lock, and the others trying to ram it from the outside. And. And the rebels attack the president, and we see dozens controlled by Starro, some barely alive, experimented on. I have to admit, okay, so spoiler for Alien Resurrection, I don't know if, I, I could imagine it's maybe more that Gunn got inspiration from the same movie that also inspired Joss Whedon to write that scene for Alien Resurrection. I don't know it's possible, it is possible, but I definitely got a vibe of, like, it's, I don't think one of them did say kill me, but that, no, yeah, they didn't, but they're all controlled by Starro, so they can't, you know, but the, there was definitely, like, yeah, and, and again, like, kudos, that's, that's how you use an R rating, you know, that is, like, obviously Starro is fictional, but horrible things done to innocent people by America? That's, that's sadly, there's a lot of that. And if this movie can help remind people of that, that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's a really good thing. I really like that it's Starro who kills the thinker because, like, basically... The, the squad don't really deserve to kill the thinker. He hasn't done anything to them. But Starro has been miserable for 30 years thanks to him and the people that he's experimented on through Starro. But we, you know, as, as far as I could tell, you can't come back. Like, if you've had a Starro star on you, you die when Starro dies. You can't, you don't wake up after, you know, it's it's not one of those. So, you know... Yeah, it couldn't, it, yeah, and and him being, like, ripped apart and thrown up against and just complete, like, he's he's essentially 100% liquid there at the end. And the bit where he's, like, saying, you know, he's explaining the, the mysterious thing that also really reminded me of, of Alien Resurrection with the, ah, the guy who does the voice for Chuck, or used to, it's someone new now, maybe? The, the, um, yeah, he's an excellent actor. Him as the scientist explaining it and then getting hurt by the alien that he's explaining. No more spoilers for Alien Resurrection. And, you know, um, Peacemaker comes in and, you know, it's like, ah, I don't, I don't trust that guy. I told you I don't trust that guy. And we think, ah, whatever, you know. But then, turns out, he won't, he won't let Rick Flagg get the, the drive with the evidence. 
and there are some explosions and we go back in time and Starro gets out and attacks the Thinker. Starro attacks Rat Catcher and let's see, what does that say? I, I quite like that some of the fight between Rick Flag and Peacemaker was reflected in Peacemaker's helmet. He said this is it's a it's a symbol what was it? It's a symbol of American freedom or something like that. And we're seeing you know, this is so yeah, this is a reflection of that's that's how he that's what he thinks needs to be done for America to remain free or you know whatever whatever they tell themselves and it was a really great fight and it's from the very start to the very end of that fight I had no idea how it was going to end and I really really thought that Rick Flagg was going to win you know it looked like he had defeated uh, peacemaker there and I mean I guess it's when you hire John Cena uh, yeah you you want to have him do something that's somewhat like a wrestler so a an extended fight with another guy is yeah and like the bit where like the the his his face like i had heard that john cena wasn't a good actor before i i i don't know maybe it's maybe it's a limited range he has or something and i get it wrestler so he's used to looking tough but when he like had like i think i think it was when yeah when he looked at rat catcher and and like she, you know, she saw him kill Rick. She, you know, and she heard the, she heard about what was supposed to be on the drive before the explosions. And so, you know, when he's look like, if she lived to be a hundred, if he spent the rest of his life trying to make things right, he, he could build hospitals she would still never completely trust him again. She would always think of him as as that, you know, he just, he he crossed the line there. And it's all, like, in this movie where dozens of characters die, and I, you know, probably over a hundred, like, deaths in the movie overall, but there's, I'd, I'd say there's probably at least a dozen characters who have names and faces we see them alive and we see them dead. But it still has an impact to see this, you know, she lost faith in him. And he, and and I love the fact that once he starts killing people to keep that secret for the American government, he seems to just, it seems like he's just going to have to keep killing people. You know, he, he kills Rick Flagg for it. And, and that, you know, oh, that's going to be it. No. Um, I forget her name, Ratcatcher. I'm gonna keep calling her Ratcatcher. She saw, and now he's gonna kill her too. And and she's like, "You you don't even have to kill me. I'm thorough." And then before he has a chance to shoot her, he see you know. Then Bloodsport is there, and he also again you have that brief realization of, and it is this thing of. And and that sadly that is often how it ends up going. You know, you if if you're determined to kill, to keep a secret, you might end up killing one after another after another. And then at the there at the end, you know, Amanda Waller still doesn't get her hands on it. It remains on a secret server that um, Bloodsport can can access. I do, I, I will say, I don't think it would have been terrible if that was like a, ah, what's the word?
the There, there by the end, it just, it felt like something more should, you know, he, he tells Harley, you know, we can't have it all. And then she starts talking about, you know, oh, we've just been talking about for hours about how your name is Milton. And then nothing more comes of it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you, how else you, you do it. And it is also this thing of like, that is... Obviously, we want the squad to be, we you know, we, we don't want Amanda Waller to be able to keep destroying people's lives that, like, I mean, it's one thing that if, if they can maybe do some good, but she's, that's not what she's interested in in these, you know, she wasn't as interested in stopping Starro as just in making sure that Nobody found out about the American government's involvement in Starro, and she didn't want Starro to be controlled by the president of Corto Maltese, regardless of which of, of the pres you know, over, over the course of the movie, were there like three different ones because they keep dying and then someone else takes over, but yeah. You know, how how do you do that? Well, you give them some leverage over her, and... Yeah, it's... Let's see. And it jumps back eight minutes earlier. The movie does do that... So, is it only two times? I guess maybe only two times. I don't think either of them... I don't think any of the times that it jumped were bad. It it easily could have been frustrating, but it was very compelling. Like, when when Nan Nanawe walks in and he sees, oh, there's all these other fish, and, like, he walks up to the... and, and they kind of, like, mimic him, and then he walks to the other side, and they follow, and, and they just keep... I was Like, he was so happy to see these... and, and then afterwards we realized, no, 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 they, they weren't, like appreciative it was that they wanted to get to him so they could they're like they have this leech thing going on I, I mean that is a thing that like Nanawe is very lonely you know that's that's a I I really didn't expect I, I thought I was just going to laugh at him when from from the trailers but the movie made me really empathize with them, made me, like, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like there's somebody else out there like him that, that we've seen so far, and, yeah, it's like, he can't really communicate with anybody, like, a rat catcher tries to be open towards him, but it's still not quite, like, yeah. That was also, it's such a great, like, very, it's one of the very last things we see is the, you know, she, she's sitting there on the, up on the roof with, with her dad and she's like a, a child and she's like, why rats, Papa? Because if, if there is a purpose for rats, then there is a purpose for all of us. And, and that's such a great, like, and it's, it's like, once you once you hear that you you know that def that defines her character from the very start to the very end she she really does like she there are a couple of times where she'll like crack a joke or something but she never really she's not cynical and jaded and mean spirited like some of the others are now I really like the the bit where like we see a polka dot man using the the polka dots and they have this sort of like acid effect like they 
they eat through flesh and and such and then like they're they're running through this place and he's got the you know he's got this bag full of explosives that they're supposed to place on all the different floors and he drops it and then like let's see what was it i think it's that um let's see first he drops it and then like they take cover and then yeah and then like Milton gets killed, and I, for, I forget, is it Bloodsport maybe who kills the the people who killed Milton? And then, you know, Polka Dot Man is like, I can't believe they killed Milton, and Harley's like, Milton? There's no one named Milton here. And they argue about that for maybe two or three minutes. And then some more people show up, and they start shooting, and Polka Dot Man, like, he's not, he, he, he doesn't take, a, he, he needs to, to, to think before acting, but he, he just throws himself into it and starts slowing. And Harley's like, no. And, and you know, the, the acid and the polka dots, you know, some of it touches the explosives and sets them all off in a, in a like a chain reaction. So, excuse me, that, that was a great, like, again, set up and payoff. We knew that these were, you know, these are sensitive explosives and he's running around with all of them and they're, they're now on the floor. And we know that the polka dots have this acid effect so these these kinds of it's, it's just like i didn't realize that that was what's gonna happen but when it happened i wasn't like how did that happen because they they set it up here are the explosives he is here oh there's some enemies here you know so he's he attacks and it's 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 yeah I really appreciate that there are a couple of scenes in the movie that slowed down a little. It it was never boring, but it didn't need it didn't feel the need to constantly be going a hundred miles a minute. And 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 poor Nanawe, he he falls out of the the tower, and then they like. Just, I mean, I I would say perforate, but I'm not sure they do. I I guess it's just like his his skin is that thick or something. Like they shoot him a lot, and it he doesn't. I'm not sure he took any damage from it. And and he like bites on and and he's got like a head in his mouth, and it's a decapitated head, but like the eyes are still moving. A little, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't happen in real life, but it's funny. And it is, this is not a movie that's supposed to be realistic. And Bloodsport, he's also like, whoa, can I can I balance it? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to be, whoa. And he falls through one. And it's like, okay. I'm okay. And then further and further down. And he sees Peacemaker about to shoot Ratcatcher, and let's see, and and then they have that bit where they both shoot directly at each other. At first, I thought that it was going to be that the bullets were going to hit each other and fall in in the middle, but let's see. So so basically, Peacemaker fired a normal bullet at Bloods. Sport, and Bloodsport fired a very small projectile so that if they shot right at each other, his would go like through, yeah, some, something. And we see that Starro is massive. I really love that, like, the Suicide Squad versus Starro the Conqueror. Like, that's a, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a comic book cover right there. And they've got the Godzilla font and like the the texts. Um, yeah, I, I think you know what I mean. That was and let's see. And and Starro throws a bunch of the the tiny things on on the faces of a bunch of soldiers. He tries to get um, Task Force. 
task. Suicide Squad members as well, but he doesn't. And then they all rise like it's a zombie movie or something, and just and it 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 feels like a fifties American sci like like the original Body Snatcher movie or something like it's it's absolutely just yeah absolutely love it and. And yeah, Waller says she wants them to let Starro attack Corto Maltese. It's actually better than like she was. She just wanted them to like as as long as the the information isn't going to get out, and it's not going to be controlled by the bad guys. Then it's actually a good thing that it's killing a bunch of innocent people. And it is like th this is the thing is the next time, like conservatives who watch these movies, the next time one of them is trying to defend, you know, yeah, U.S. foreign policy. You know, someone else who's watched the movie can point out, but, I mean, you watched The Suicide Squad, didn't, you know, with, with like, Starro attacking all these civilians and the American government doesn't even mind. You know, what's the conservative going to say? No, 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 but like, it doesn't hurt innocent people. It only hurts the, the military of the people. And then the other person can provide all the substantial evidence there is that that isn't true. It does hurt innocent people all the time. And a, way too many American politicians just kind of let it, you know, they or even defend it. Or fight to make sure that it can continue to happen. It I, I really love that the movie does that. And I realize there's some people that aren't going to... You know, some, some people won't change their mind. Some people don't think about things like that while watching a movie. But there are some people that will have their minds changed. And all of them abandon the mission to stop Starro, and Waller is furious, wanting to blow them up, and is knocked out by the golf club. That was the first pad through, so moving on to the second one. I really like that, you know, with Waller knocked out, the, the staff help uh, Task Force X. You know, because cause it is this thing, you know, one of them's like, get your ass over there and get us some satellite imagery or something like that, you know. And I, I really appreciate that Rick Flagg died a hero rather than living on as a government stooge. You know, he, he specifically said, I am not going to be a puppet for my government. If, if, if my government did this, then, you know, and, and this thing of, like, Peacemaker even says, I'm not saying it was okay, but I, you know, I, I can't let this information get out there. You know, that, yeah. Because he could so easily have been just boring. It could easily have, like, if Rick Flagg said, but they, you know, they, they experimented on children, and Peacemaker just says, so what? You know, that it would be so much less interesting. For sure, there are people like that out there. But the fact that he says, I know, I know it was bad, okay? I agree. But I can't let this out. You know, I... Uh, yeah. Let's see. And... Yeah. Uh, Polka Dot Man sees Starro as his mom. And, you know, I, when, when he, like, used the acid to cut through one of the legs, I thought he was going to, like, I, I, I think I, in, I would have guessed that he was going to keep cutting off its legs and eventually it would die and, like, bleed out maybe or something. But no, it, it gets, he gets one leg and then steps on, you know, that's, that's the thing, it's a starfish, like, it has multiple of the 
I, I don't know if you want to call them legs, but I, I don't know enough about starfish, but maybe they aren't called legs. I don't know. But I, I really like that he, you know, he, he shouts, I'm a superhero, I'm a superhero. He, he did die a hero. If not for him, the others might not have been able to, to stop Starro. And I like that, you know, Bloodsport and, and Ratcatcher are both, you know, both tell the other, I'm going to get you out of here alive. And they do. You know, Bloodsport tackles her when she, like, I guess it's like she doesn't have enough experience, maybe. She was a little too um, optimistic with where she was standing. Like, she would have died if he hadn't tackled her. He, the, the, he does the Secret Service thing, you know, jumps in, and yeah. But she uses her power, you know, she, she makes sure that he stays where he is when she just uses her power like crazy and it's, it's ah, what's it called? Yeah, you know, so, so together they, I really like how Starro talks through people and seeing like hundreds, I mean, I guess total, it must be thousands of rats attacking Starro. That was like, yeah, the, the, let's see. And, you know, Harley dives into Starro's eye with the javelin and the rats follow and eat through. Let's see. And yeah, so Rat Catcher and Harley kill Starro. Pokemon Man, substantially slowed him down and so did not King Shark and yeah I, I thought that was great and and there's that thing of like the the um, Starro tells Ratcatcher the the city isn't yours it's mine and she responds the city is neither yours or ours it's theirs and it's all these rats that just yeah i really like that you know the the um alice braga sol soria says you know democracy we, we have democratic election in corto maltese for the first time in 90 years and that's such a great you know and and i really love that it 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 came from the inside you know you there was a little bit of uh what's it called you know the the u.s government helped a little but they allowed the people you know once like in, the the thing is in in the real world the u.s government has many times intervened and like assassinated gotten like done coups and such to get rid of someone who was democratically elected but who wouldn't share oil, for example. And so so to for the movie to specifically say, you know, we got rid of the the Yeah. You know, the the coup has yeah, is it wait, is it a coup that they did? I'm I'm not one hundred percent certain because they didn't install uh, they they it's gonna lead to democratic elections. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but let's see. And we see Waller accepting Bloodsport's terms. And and yeah, Harley talks about we've just been talking about we've just had a conversation for like three hours about how your name is definitely Milton, and you miss your state boy. And on on the plane bag, you know, rat catchers asleep, and was it Sebastian? I think the name, the rat was named Sebastian, is on blood sword's thigh, and is is like sleeping, and he's like, oh, I don't want to touch it, I don't want to touch it. Okay, sweet little thing, you're not gonna, you're not gonna eat me, you're not gonna do anything nasty to me, and it's like, you know. Because he can appreciate, I mean, <laughs> Sebastian and his kin just saved the world, so 
a thank you would be nice. And Weasel is lying back on the beach. He coughs up some water and he just walks up. I love the, the eyes. Like, you can't tell if Weasel knows where he is or understands any of what's going on around him and just, yeah. And we get the post credit scene that... Uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Peacemaker has survived, and I mean, I don't, I don't know why I was surprised by that. I already knew that he was getting a series, but you know, that is, that is the thing when you when you announce the series before the premiere of the movie that the person also appears in. We know that they must survive by definition. That brings us to the final section. Entitled Notes Taken Before Watching. So let's see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the first Suicide Squad, the 2016 Suicide Squad has quite a few major problems. I already mentioned that explained well by Tony Anderson Renegade Cut and Cosmo the Ryan the Hour. One problem that I realize not everyone considers a problem is the the fact that the villain characters are changed towards something considered more realistic. The colors are muted, the more outlandish elements are downplayed. Not in all regards, certainly Enchantress is an exception. But I do think that with this concept, you really should go all out. These characters are out there. The idea of assembling all of them, putting them on a team where they fight for the good guys is insane. So you should go completely crazy with it. David Iyer clearly prefers the kind of L.A. gang environment for his movies. Fury is really the only movie he's directed that doesn't have any of that flavor. And it's a World War II movie, so of course it's not a gang movie. I love almost every single one of his movies, but I don't think he's right for this kind of concept. It's not the fact that the material here is very dark. It's the gang flavor. I And... Yeah, I knew that James Gunn would fully embrace how nuts this material is, like he did with the two Guardians and the Galaxy movies. And and I'm sure he will with the third as well. And let's see. Oh, right. I have a note here for this review that's from the 12th of April in 2019. At the time, they were talking about recasting every single role. And I was like, well, it's going to be difficult to find a Harley Quinn that's a spot on. I think it might be a while before we see, before the DCEU at least has a live action Harley Quinn that is not portrayed by Margot Robbie. That is, that is going to be, a, yeah. Let's see. Now, let's see. right, and the right the the for when when they filmed this, they used red cameras, so the camera can always be moving. Now, the camera always moving and using red cameras are. Those are also qualities of the movie Gamer by the directors of the Crank movies. I am not a fan of Gamer. I think it works substantially better here, but that's, you know, at the end of the day, like, James Gunn, even even when he has, you know, even with limitations, he can put out great work where... I love the two Crank movies, especially the second one, but I don't think that... I'm, I'm not sure that the, the Neville Dean Taylor, the Crank directors, are really... I, th I think if they just... I, I would love to see a Crank 3. I think they... I could imagine they still have some insane ideas that could be amazing. But I'm not sure... Yeah, I mean, they their, their career pretty much stalled. They they made several that just did not do that. I mean, I I feel like they're 
their Ghost Rider, it was fine. It was substantially better than the first one. But, yeah, you know, when after a while, you just... People lose faith in you if, if you can't really make something that... But if they at some point did make a Crank 3, I, I can imagine it would be a lot of fun. Now, that... Let's see. Right. Yeah. So I've been I've been going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to include this, but yeah, here goes. In preparation for this, I rewatched, you know, I, I rewatched Suicide Squad: Birds of Prey, and I rewatched the videos on Suicide Squad by, among others, Folding Ideas. Before I say anything more, I want to underline I really love these videos in general, and I think he did an incredible job taking apart many of the countless problems with the 2016 Suicide Squad. And most of what he said about the following, I do think he nailed. When in the movie he talks about the climax, he points to the editing when Harley grabs Enchantress's heart. How it cuts from that to Rick Flagg saying, her heart's out, we can end this, and then a while passes before we even see the heart again. I agree that the editing is bad, but it seems like Dan Olsen here is under the impression that her heart being out means that they're now going to try to kill Enchantress. I agree, the editing does a really bad job of indicating the following. I didn't realize it until repeat viewings of the movie, but what Rick is saying is that now that the heart is out, they can destroy the machine. He's communicating strategy, basically. I agree that, you know, he talks about, Danielson talks about, oh, you know, the it, it ruins the, the flow and the, the energy is lost 100%. But I believe that he was, you know, Rick Flagg was saying, now that her heart is out, we don't have to keep attacking, you know, yeah, now we can, you know, because the that's why the very next thing we see is them throwing the explosives and blowing up the machine by shooting the explosives. Only after that do we see her heart again, because whether or not Enchantress is still alive is not as important as whether or not the machine is still active, because as long as it's active, it's killing people. But once again, the movie does a very bad job of communicating that to the audience. The first several times, I also focused more on, on the heart, and uh, yeah, anyway. If you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and currently the these videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you like, if you want more like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.